Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 22nd, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Kim and I decided to try a new spot, so we went to Ontario Beach Park, and I've been there once about two years ago to chase Barrow's Golden Eye, but there's been some rare galls reported there recently, so we decided to check it out. And the first gall that I found that was rare was this gall, which I reported originally as laughing gall, but later in this afternoon when I uploaded the photo, someone told me it's actually a Franklin's gall. So you can see those big white eye arcs, I guess you would say. It's not really a complete eye ring. And a partial hood and a thin bill. So Franklin's gall is much more rare than laughing gall, and it's actually a life bird for me. So pretty exciting, although I wish I had known it at the time. So after I record this, I'll probably go back out and see if I can get another look at it when I actually know what I'm looking at. And we also found a late Iceland gall. You can just see how pale this bird is overall with the white wingtips back here. And smaller than a glaucus gall, has more of a kind of cute dove-like head to it, kind of a small bill. And we also had a couple ruddy turnstones. After that, we decided to check out the firehouse woods, which was kind of quiet and slow, not very many good looks. Yesterday evening, we were there after the hawk watch, and we had a lot of good looks at many different species of warbler. A little quieter today, but we did get to see some baby robins in a nest. And I also got to photograph this house wren, which I've seen and heard a lot, but I don't think I'd photographed any yet this spring. Next, we jumped over to the church trail, and right when we got there, the text alert went out of an olive-sided flycatcher that someone had just down the path, but by the time we got there, the bird was gone. But actually, before all that excitement, right at the parking lot, we could hear a woodpecker drumming on a basketball hoop backboard. And it was like changing in pitch as the bird climbed up and eventually this red-bellied woodpecker peeked out over the top. We had some nice looks at bay-breasted warblers. And this black Bernian warbler really was showing off his orange throat in the sunlight. And I even got a nice photo as it jumped from one branch to another. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park, and you can tell the marsh looks quite a bit different than most of the season. There's actually some green. The American white pelican continues on Braddock Bay in a big feeding frenzy of galls and cormorants. And here's another photo of it with its wings closed, and you can see that huge yellow bill. Today was sunny, but there was a high layer of haze moving in from wildfires in Canada. Winds were moderate to strong out of the northeast, so because of that wind direction, the count was conducted from Frisbee Hill, but it was a really slow day. But it got some decent raptor photos, so let's take a look. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk, so all red tails show the dark patagial bars and the belly band, and the adults have the dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. Here's an adult bald eagle that was soaring high overhead. Here's a juvenile broad-winged hawk. You can see that really straight trailing edge to the wing, and it's molting some inner primary feathers. Here's a turkey vulture, and usually even on slow days at the hawk watch, we see a fair number of turkey vultures, but there was just a very small number of them around today. Here's another look at a juvenile broad-winged hawk. So you can see that brown spotting on the underside, and you can see that tail pattern as well, which kind of thin bands, and then one wider band here at the tip. Here's an adult red-tailed hawk getting chased by an American crow. Here we have an extremely fresh juvenile bald eagle. You can just see how dark that head and the body are. Some white in the wing pit area. Even trailing edge to the wing since all of the feathers are the same age. And in fact, they're brand new, so hardly any feather wear at all or fading on this bird. Here we have a juvenile red-tailed hawk, so a little more pale looking than the adults, but again, we see those dark patagial bars and the belly band, but no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail. Here we have another Budio. It's got that classic Budio shape. We see somewhat pointed wingtips, one, two, three, four feathers making up the wingtip, making them a little more pointed. Don't see a dark patagial bar, and instead of a belly band, it's got patterning that extends up all the way to the upper breast. So this is a juvenile broad-winged hawk. Here we have a hawk that's more like a flying cross. You can see somewhat large head and long tail, wings held out straight, and some brown teardrop streaking on the underside. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. And here we have those two birds interacting. So on the bottom left, we have the juvenile broad-winged hawk, and on the top right, we have the juvenile Cooper's hawk. 
So you can kind of see a comparison of the difference in the tail pattern with the Cooper's Hawk having much wider tail bands, a much more distinct tail pattern. Uh, the Broadwing is more of a pale looking tail, just very thin bands, not as much contrast to it. You can get a sense of the difference on the underside streaking with the Cooper's Hawk having that brown teardrop streaking mostly concentrated on the upper breast. The Broadwing is a little more concentrated in the middle, but it does extend up to the upper breast. And you can just see a slight difference in overall shape, but sometimes it's not as obvious as you would think because Broadwing Hawks can look quite long tailed at times. Here's one of the local Osprey returning to the nest up on top of the cell phone tower. And Kim even went and got a pizza for lunch. Taking a look at the eBird checklist at Ontario Beach and Charlotte Pier, we had 19 species, just not a lot of variety of habitat. At the Firehouse Woods, we had 30 species. At the Church Trail, we had 34 species. At Braddock Bay Park, I just put a partial list in for the pelican. And at Frisbee Hill, we had 28 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 8 turkey vultures, 1 bald eagle, 1 cooper's hawk, three broad-winged hawks, one red-tailed hawk, for a total of 14 migrating raptors. This brings the May total to 12,046, and the season total to 48,871. The only new species for the season was Franklin's gall. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking mostly sunny with a high in the low 70s, winds southeast shifting northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So, the winds are a little more favorable there in the early morning. We might start to get a bit of a flight, but then as it shifts around to that northeast lake breeze, would not expect much, and we'll probably have to move to Frisbee Hill. For Wednesday, looking cloudy with occasional rain showers, a morning high of 66 dropping to around 50, and moderate north-northwest winds, so would expect not much migration that day. And for Thursday, it's looking mainly sunny with a high of 57, so quite a bit cooler compared to recent days at least. Winds north-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So again, an unfavorable wind. And looking ahead after that, there's a lot of northeast winds in the forecast, which are just overall unfavorable for the raptor migration. However, looks like there's some good songbird migration nights coming up. Um, if you check BirdCast, it says hi for a couple of the upcoming nights. So be sure to get out in the morning and see what migrants are coming through as we wrap up the month of May and wrap up spring migration. Hope to see you out in the field or on the platform soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.